Oh, man. Uh, it started, yeah, at video games at, at EA. Uh, that was my first job. I remember I was in college, animation school, working at Starbucks. And I always, I worked really hard in school. And this is like in Canada in the early 2000s. And I just didn't really think it would ever pan out. It was a dream. And I was pushing really hard. I was like, oh, but there's no, there's not that many jobs. Like, it's just not going to happen. Uh, and I got lucky and EA hired me as like a intern. And then I just worked on a uh, NHL hockey game because I'm Canadian. And if you work in, you work on NHL. Uh, it's a, a huge like win. <laughs> I mean, that's in, in Canada, it's uh, hockey, it's, it's huge. Yeah, yeah, and I don't really like hockey that much, uh, so I had to learn a lot, but it was good, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know if you know, I, I was living in Canada, in Montreal, for almost three years, oh, cool. and I never went to see any hockey game in life. You missed out, it's, it's, yeah, watching it, it is fun, watching it is fun. Yeah, I, I, I th yeah, I, I found it's. I mean, being Spanish and Spain, you know, it's, it's soccer, football in Spain. Yeah. I, I, I found it's uh, when it's a bit more contact games are much more fun to watch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everyone gets really into it, so it's always a good time. And um, next time you're in Canada, we'll go. We'll, we'll see a game. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Um, and after after that, I spent a couple of years in like kids TV, which is kind of why I'll say later, but I get more into like uh, pitching animation and stuff. But I uh, got into kids. I worked in kids animation for a while there in Canada. And uh, again, it was Canadian content and uh, no one's ever heard of it or seen it. So it's just funny. Like I knew I would ask like my nephews and nieces and stuff. And I'd be like, hey, have you guys seen this show that I'm working on? And no one's heard of it. The kids even in Canada, no one would watch it. So. <laughs> Uh, let, me, let me check because I think I know the the company. You, I, I don't want to lie, but um, sure. I'm just gonna double check my. Uh, it's called it's called Nerdcore. It was yeah, it's, it's that one. Yeah. yeah, I was about to say, but I didn't want to say Netcorps. Yeah, of course I know that one because they were using Softimage. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And all this 2D, they have the evil. What was this one? They, 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 what the evil baby with the antennas? And yeah, they yeah, have yeah. The, I think it was super evil, which was a friend Storm of mine. Hawks or something like that. Yeah, yeah, Stormhawks too. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. a good time. I had a blast working there. I made a lot of nice. lifelong friends there. You know, it was super awesome. I really appreciated the uh, the time. And when you work in like kids TV like that, where there's no time, they really. Um, teach or they don't really teach you but you just kind of learn how to get fast you know what i mean and, and how to yeah. like how to get ideas out there quickly which i really thought was beneficial yeah but i remember i mean i know the shows i remember that once oh. uh, the, the, i don't remember the name of the the one the red little guy the bad guy yeah. and it was yeah. a big uh like it's group. called uh, league of super evil yeah um, that one yeah, oh, it's yeah. funny i saw several episodes of that one it was it was funny it's great. The, uh, the writers were friends of mine and uh, the creators and um, yeah, super fun guys. That's awesome. Um, and after that, I got back into games. I worked on this like cult classic game called Sleeping Dogs, um, which was pretty fun. It's kind of like Grand Theft Auto, but it was in Hong Kong and uh, it, was, it was a fun time. And um, then I got into visual effects. So I worked at MPC uh and that was always my goal was to work in the feature mm. so i was pretty excited that i got to uh get there and work on stuff like godzilla and superman and all this kind of stuff um and uh yeah i worked a couple of vfx places in vancouver for a bit and then ultimately i ended up at uh ilm which was really kind of like my dream as well the mm. goal and that was really fun and i worked there for about three years on a bunch of stuff like transformers and Terminator and Marvel and uh, last I did a couple of really small shots on Star Wars, which was kind of cool. And uh, around that time, I got really into real time like mm -hmm. tools. I just kind of found they were it's super addicting and really fun, you know, for mm -hmm. creators to to hop in there. And um, I started making short films in Unity, and Unity saw one of my short films, and they really supported it. Uh, at Annecy, which is a big film festival mm -hmm. in France. Uh, and then they offered a job for me after that. So I came and joined oh. the team. Um, so that, that won the Nathan's Island. 
Yeah, Norman's Island. Yeah. Oh, no, sorry, cool. nothing. It's your <laughs> Norman's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yes, yeah, usual island. <laughs> That's true. Uh, yeah, yeah. That was the fun. That was the first real show that I pitched and developed, and it it uh, got optioned after Annecy, and just kind of sat on the shelf at the company for a little bit, and and mm. is now, I guess, back in. I own it again. So yeah, it just kind of didn't really go anywhere, which is too bad, but right. it was a fun experience. And right. uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to ask a little more about uh, this project. Uh, but sure. first, I would like to ask you, like, how, how do you, I mean, because you wanted to work on feature films and, but then uh, something inside you force you like to say, okay, I want to do my own stuff. I did this yeah. uh, uh, projects for kids that was maybe at the beginning, not my goal but now i feel like i want to do more these kind of projects as a personal endeavor how yeah. how came how to came to be yeah. this it's a, it's a great question um well first of all i have two kids and so i watch a lot of stuff that they watch and i'm kind of like i can do this like i don't even need a team i could probably like not a huge team i just need some friends and we could probably make this you know what i mean Yes. Uh, no offense to the other people working on stuff, but I just felt like I, it's a challenge that I wanted to try. Uh, and um, also, though, when you work on feature films, especially VFX, it can be a bit of a grind at times. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, every little pixel gets noodled and stuff, and that's great. Like, we want to make the best quality work that yes. we can. But sometimes it's really liberating to be like, I just want to do this for me and for mm. nobody else. And it's going to be my voice and my vision on screen. And if you know what, if a strand of hair is not in the right spot, I don't really care. It's going to be fine. You know what I mean? Like, yes, yeah. you have the fun without the pain of like this, uh, like going too much on maybe extreme details for, uh, just this. Sometimes is this one person extra quality that makes, uh, like people on the VFX or on the on the cinema on the uh, big movies to say, oh, this CG was uh, like cheap yeah. and this CG was awesome. It's it's always this maybe last ten yeah. percent that takes ninety percent of the time yeah. to get yeah. it. Yeah, and, and it's it, the most painful part. I know, and it works. Like if you see Avatar or whatever, and it's yeah, it's, I mean, it's amazing. It's, it's awesome. amazing, truly amazing. Uh, but when you're small and indie like that. I don't know. You can't really, you can't compete. So I feel like just go with uh, what makes you happy and what you're interested in. And it's yes. really rewarding, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. I, I feel you. I mean, it's the same for me. I, 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 I don't work in VFX. Uh, I always, in my case, I always try to avoid it. I did some when I was oh. back in Canada and some, but I don't know. I, I felt like yeah, I, I wanted to stay more on the animation real realm yeah. or video games, like less hyper realistic things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If um, but yeah, I have many friends that went that route, and I know the the <laughs> how much hard. I mean, animation is also hard work, but I think uh, a BFX uh, in many situations it's um, it's it's a uh, not what, service or contract so you you not producing your own movie it's it's someone to hire you so it, it's yeah. it, it's it's slightly different the the context in when this uh hard work uh happen I, I, I less for my my experience like it's it's a little different when it's a feature film and you work for the production company i mean it's their studio com it's not like a service so it's a more internal right. thing it's the 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 there i think it's a slightly different the uh let's say that they're the flows the, the the way that it's every everybody works is slightly different that's um, cool yeah I never... at, at least for me I, I like more but i know um yeah some people yeah. like more vfx because uh love for movies and like <laughs> like, I like uh life action <laughs> yeah yeah and i guess it depends on like your studio you're at but it seems like in the full cg side of things like <laughs> You might have more freedom to try things. You know what I mean? Like I have an idea for this the shot that it's not storyboarded, but it's just a, a hunch. Um, mm -hmm. does that does that ring true to you in your experience or in? Uh, well, uh, it's uh, to like in in animation, like um, yeah, probably you can do more that. Uh, I have to say that uh, when I was animator. 
I didn't. I mean, I, I wasn't an animator for a long time. I was a horrible, terrible animator. And I quickly switched to, to rigging and uh, I'm stay, I stay here. So uh, it's a slightly different for rigging. So like, I mean, you, you have obviously in the same way, like, oh, I have this idea for this rig or this solution for this shot and things like that. So, but at the same time, because we are not involved in the most uh, creative part of the storytelling, like we are... I mean, uh, some people is gonna kill me to say that, but uh, <laughs> like we, we, I think we are involved in the like creative of the characters. We can yeah. uh, add or input in many situations for the designs to help the formation, to help uh, maybe performance and things like that. But when it comes uh, or per shot, like when you 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 animate, mm -hmm. uh, we are a, a bit off of this loop normally. Mm -hmm. uh, unless it's like uh, character effects things that then, then you, you are in the loop but more for cloths right. or hair or things like that so uh i cannot add too much on that from my experience sadly uh, i wish uh, uh that's um but yeah i'm normally i'm not in the dailies or things like mm -hmm. that for animation mm -hmm. normally um, in some shows uh, that I've been supervising, yes, I'm in the dailies, in the majority of the dailies on animation, but basically to, you know, to, to check out if the rigs are uh, working as expected and they can reach the poses and keep iterating the qualities, but yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. It's slightly, oh. slightly different, sorry, long explanation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, that's great. Um, I guess... When it, like in VFX, there's still a lot of creativity, but it's more just like, how can you take this idea and plus it? And that's been my experience is like, here's some previs. How can you take that general concept of what the characters are doing and, and make it like a trailer shot or something? That was always my goal. Like, can I get a shot in the trailer? And yeah. if I can, I'd be super <laughs> stoked. <laughs> so that was always a fun challenge. Yeah. yeah. But I heard, um, and again, uh, because my lack of, of experience on, on BFX for um, live action, yeah. that also like this, it's it's a it's a, um, kind of a double-edged sword, because if the planning was not meant to do certain things mm -hmm. and then they want to, like more creative ways to change something that maybe the, the, the BFX soup was not that day on the shoot or because right. it was no BFX and they decide, oh, we need to put this BFX because we want tentacles on whatever, I don't know, yeah. like making up this thing. And then they come, oh, we have this creative decision last minute to put this and it's, oh my God, this is not being properly set to track anything or whatever things. This is also like what I, I, I hear like in BFX is like, oh no. <laughs> Here we go. A lot of times there's technical challenges because you're trying to match the plate or the camera's doing a certain thing and you're locked into that. Mm -hmm. You're like, crap, how am I going to make this work? Like, this is so hard. Mm -hmm. And there are numerous challenges like that. I'm sure it happens in full CG world as, as well all the time. But um, it, it's a, it, what I saw it happen here, it's um, in animation, many, many times you animate for the camera. Yeah. And then the director comes and decides to move the camera. <laughs> and then it's not good, obviously, because, and it's like at the end, oh, it's it's all approved, but just move the camera and then it's all off and yeah, it's yeah. not approved. So yeah, you need to restart or a lot of adjustments and well, you probably know better than me. <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I heard, I was watching, uh, well, few months ago this um making off for uh Gibero, the alberto Miel, oh, yeah. the the one that lived and it was i think it was the anime supervisor or one of the anime supervisors was saying that they animate like completely not to camera like the animation yeah and even they have um like um the animatic and everything and layouts already pretty well defined they animate in a way that they can change it always the mm. And the last minute and i it i mean it paid off i mean the, the that that uh short film was amazing in terms of yeah. camera work and yeah. and uh direction but yeah i i imagine it's it's i mean a part of the huge amount of work that you need to do for animating in just anything animating that works in any angle like this is a full anime even the fits everything that even probably it's not gonna be in in the final uh 
like framing it's animated just in case it, it, oh for it, sure it happens all the time like if you're animating a crowd of people and you're like working on all the little toes and foot contacts and all this kind of stuff and then you're like oh man those details are gonna look so good on the big screen and then you see it and it's like covered in smoke and it's out of focus and you're like oh darn that that, <laughs> that happens all the time and that's okay you know it's just uh if if you would have known that those details would be added earlier then maybe you could save time you know and money by not adding that type of stuff in there but it, you know it's all good <laughs> yeah i yeah I, I saw that many times <laughs> the um yeah <laughs> like oh your shot is completely off of the uh, the uh, final edit uh, after finishing and everything <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh, the um so going to your your project so your first uh, experience with uh was with uh norman iceland yeah and how 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 it started that one so you you did the teaser the the one with the robot and the guy mm -hmm. you know dancing with the robot arms thing yeah. how, how or can you explain a little bit also about the, the story the background how sure yeah it's just about a um a, a brother and sister who are marooned on an island full of robots uh mm -hmm. and i look at the shows that i loved as a kid like ninja turtles batman the animated series all those types of things that i think if you look at now are kind of a hard sell you know what i mean like mm -hmm. uh ninja turtles and batman they're very well known you know ips yes. but if if you look at it on the, on what it actually is it's kind of it's like batman's a really kind of dark moody mm -hmm. uh mystery and with action and guns and uh you know all this kind of stuff and and ninja turtles is like a weird 80s retro like just strange idea about these ninjas that skateboard and their mutant turtle it's just like it's a bizarre concept yeah uh, the weird title but, is like super <laughs> yeah um or the and top, i think yeah. that it's kind of a shame because i i love i love like silly ideas and mm -hmm. like the sillier the idea with with really good characters that are relatable i think is a really fun like mm -hmm. balance you know um and so norman's island was just about like this kid who makes uh, a friend with like some good guy robots mm -hmm. uh on this island and there's there's a battle between the good guy robots and the bad robots mm -hmm. who are like trying to take over the world, but they're all stuck on this island. They're trying to get off and go to mm -hmm. like the main, you know, mainland USA or whatever and and take over. So no one's got to stop them. Um, and it was fun. It was it was a really fun project, and uh, I wanted to see how much I could do with a small team. It was really just me and my friend Brad Sroshka who who modeled the characters. Um, and uh we just kind of pulled resources together and um i wanted to learn unity or some other real-time engine and i chose mm -hmm. Unity early on and um had this project to kind of to help it all kind of come together and it was just like i would drive home after work um and it was like an hour commute get home put my kids to bed do the dishes and then spent a couple hours like working on this okay. thing for like a year and then oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> taking notes i have kids also so okay <laughs> I, I i do exactly the same so that after doing the dishes i barely can open my eyes i know it's <laughs> i don't have the same energy anymore to do that so yeah. exactly <laughs> that's it that's the thing yeah but yeah it's um a good experience uh taking it to annecy because that's where i just don't remember hearing all my friends say like you've got to go to annecy it's just the mm -hmm. best place for animation and it's true it's like yeah no it's just like uh animation like um i don't know everyone is there you know yeah. I, I love the festival I, I i when i used to live in barcelona i used to go every year oh cool and there was a week of like super recharge energy super like uh amazing experience like not only the uh i mean the majority of festivals i i went there they have some events or some things but you go to the screenings yeah. and that's it there's yeah. but there it's like a, i don't know i don't have words to explain it. it's because it's animators all over the place it's yeah. so, so small in the center and you f breathe and uh, leave animation for a whole week like yeah. non-stop and 
and there, there are a lot of like even if you don't uh, if you are not invited to any like party or anything it doesn't matter you go to any restaurant any bar <laughs> yeah <laughs> you start talking with people and everybody works in animation do animation wants to do animation it's yeah. true it's true even like i remember just sitting at a random cafe for lunch by myself yes. and I, i heard people talking about something or i was on a phone call and they were like hey what was that thing and then we started talking about animation and they were just like yeah. other friends so you know yeah. it's just like it's crazy and and it also is very different sometimes you you can see big names coming and mm. uh, they are very approachable there is no like uh I think a lot of press. I didn't know the. I mean, there's press obviously, but it's not like Cannes or all these festivals that probably there there are super annoyed uh, people. There, it's like there. I, I remember one year uh, was Tim Burton there was. Oh wow! And um, I was <laughs> was walking with um, a friend. He bought a, like um, the um, what's called the Corpse Bride uh, doll, like big one. And then, and then we were walking, and and he was saying, "Oh, I want to give to 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 uh, a friend that's a present." And and I <laughs> and we were talking, and it was Tim Burton sit on the terrace in one of the terrace. And I say, "Why did you ask Tim Burton that signed it to you?" And I say, "Oh, well, you know, it's, you know, it's there. It's there. It's like two meters off from us." And oh, he was like. And we went there. Do you mind to sign? Wow. It? Of course, he opened it all and signed it on the on the leg, the doll, and thank you. And oh. super, super, like it was like, like super, like kind of uh, I don't know, weird situation in a way that oh, is there? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. I love yeah. that. And it is true that. though. Like you run into everybody. Um, uh, I, I just ran into Dean DeBlois. He's the director of. Uh, I probably said his name wrong. Dean. Uh, he's yeah, director. Uh, yeah, in, uh, the uh, how to train your dragon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was just like this, this yeah. is a super nice, awesome guy. Just talked about how to train a dragon for a bit. It was just, I love those movies a lot. Like the first one's awesome. So yeah, all, all of them are awesome. I yeah. heard he's gonna direct now the live action adaptation of the. Oh, is I, it? I read somewhere. Uh, oh. Maybe I'm. Uh, I hope I'm not wrong, but yeah, I think I read it somewhere on on the internet. Nice, that'll be great. I look forward to uh, to seeing that. That'll be awesome. And very interesting, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and yeah. Well, yeah, anyway, that yeah, this festival is amazing. And <laughs> it's, um, right. it was your first time in the festival? That was my first time and I knew no one and I knew nothing and I just spent the money and my wife was like, you better make this work. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from Canada, it's a bit pricey. To... Especially the West Coast Canada, but um, Uh, you know, it's fine. It was good. I, I wouldn't have taken it back at all because it's just, I made, mm -hmm. uh, made a lot of friends there and uh, yeah, super rad experience. So, yeah. And, and, and you, you went, I mean, you did some presentations there with uh, Unity because you used uh, Unity for, for this project. Yeah. Yeah. So um, since working at Unity, um, every now and then, I because I still like to make my own hobby projects on the side. So I started this company called Little Mountain Animation mm -hmm. that's part of uh, Norman's Island that started all that kind of stuff. Um, and it's just me and a couple of friends, like my friend Brad and stuff, whoever I can um, convince to help me out on these things uh, to kind of make short films and, and see where it goes. Like I had this, this dinosaur thing for a while, which I still kind of do a little bit um, with my son giving the voice of this dinosaur character. Um, And sometimes Unity will ask me like, hey, this is cool. Can you do a talk on like how you make this stuff? I'm like, okay. Yeah. And I usually am not the best public speaker. So I stumbled my way through a live demo. Um, Cause I don't know about you, but I feel like a lot of the times I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just trying stuff and it works. And then I'm like, Great, done. And then it's out of my brain forever. Uh, and then so I'm like, <laughs> I have to do a talk. Pretty, I'm like, pretty close. Oh, <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> so if you're ever watching this and you've seen me at one of the talks, uh, I'm sorry. So <laughs> <laughs> no, don't be sorry. I mean, it, it's. I think yeah, I have the same feeling, and um, and and it, like the same way that the, 
doing the podcast sometimes I, I feel oh I'm terrible doing the podcast and doing but like later I hear people is listening to the podcast and they say they like it so I'm I'm, I'm, I'm very flattered like okay so I'm maybe I'm a terrible but it's still like maybe I'm just good inviting people or I don't know but no you're awesome man and, but and the, honestly, the, uh, yeah, yeah it's it's, um, it's always and, and because I'm non-native English speakers sometimes I get stuck and I I feel like terrible like feel oh. like lack of vocabulary. <laughs> oh, dude, you're you're the best. This is awesome. Thank you. Um, and uh, you know I think it's just like every time we create something and we put it out there in the world, it's it's a risky thing. You know, like you're putting a lot of yourself out there when you do these things, and people will judge it. I know, like when I worked at VFX and when I was at these studios there's a lot of people criticizing other stuff all the time. Like, Oh, look at this movie. It looks like crap. And it's like, when I put my stuff out there, I know for sure those same guys probably hate the stuff I make, but it doesn't really matter. It's just more fun for me to explore and get stuff out there and, and create things. And I think that's, uh, I don't know. That's just what life is. It's, it's, you have to take those risks. Yeah. You uh, need to enjoy the journey. If not, yeah. It's gonna be tasteless at the end exactly exactly the, um, but yeah and also like yeah the topic on on the, if i mean you you never sh i i learned like criticizing a work of someone it's it's almost impossible without knowing the context uh that the the work was done and yeah. that's something because i work uh with uh amazing teams in many different projects uh, with the same team and one project ends up being amazing and the other you see your own work and say oh i'm not happy with the work what we did here but then you look back and say okay <clears throat> actually you know it's quite amazing that we pull off this with the, yeah. <laughs> the resources time and budget that we had because <laughs> the one that you were satisfied maybe it had like 10 times more <laughs> yeah resources and everything and time and you had more uh and it's about iteration in many situations it's not like you are worse one time and better the other time it's like it's uh, for me it's it's all about time and iteration so as mm. much as you can iterate and and polish and polish and polish your the work you you get better it's uh, i guess it's this extra 10 percent that takes 90 percent of yeah. the time then that it's the it's the same thing so yeah you cannot judge the the work yeah. you know i hear you yeah no it's very true um but sometimes what's really frustrating is like i don't know if you had this before where you're working on a shot there's one shot i worked on on game of thrones that like went up to version 100 in animation and the oh director saw it. <laughs> and then He's like, you know what? Let's go back to version three. At the very end, it's like, oh. <laughs> so that's what we did. So it wasn't even the last ninety percent took all. It was just, uh, mm. you know, we didn't know what the idea was going to be. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I heard stories. Uh, that is kind of like, like similar situation. Many, many changes, and yeah. the guy just ended up like, okay, I'm just gonna take version like two or version one and i'm mm -hmm. gonna show it again and then it approve it and take it the one <laughs> or something like that like yeah, very because yeah. again iteration is not sometimes about to improve always is to have uh sometimes a better way to compare things it's like that's why you put sometimes shot like play to animations at the same time to see the difference or right. when you do color grading i think it's very specifically color grading it's very uh difficult to do uh if you don't have any reference yeah to compare so your, your so, eyes adjust so fast at least that's what yes. I, find when I yeah i i admire the like, colorists uh who, yeah. i mean it's amazing how they see the things and i i i had ex when i was in montreal uh, at, i was working at a studio called shed mm. a small uh like boutique that we did mainly advertisement and some vfx and there was like a color grading room and i had the opportunity to to go there and uh, do you mind i see that i see work and and the colors are so good man i was amazed like the i, I mean the, the raw footage for me was amazing like yeah. it's good 
Yeah, and yeah. They, they start changing stuff. Like, oh, it was not good. I realize now when I see it side it's by side. Yeah. So true. It's to me like color grading and sound design yeah. are two things that can really make your piece look like it's it's got a good budget. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's yeah, absolutely. It's unbelievable the power that they have. So yeah. <laughs> But yeah, and and well, I, do you do, for instance, on your uh, projects, uh, color grading after outputting the uh, image from from Unity? Um, what do I have time to do it? I would, um, you know, a lot of times you could just put like a what's it called, S log or whatever, with like no, mm -hmm. no real grade on it, and then you could. But I'm not really a color grading kind of guy. I would just like slap a light on top of it and be like, yeah, it looks fine, done. And uh, I'm sure if there's any color grading people in the audience, they are very mad at me. But um, I would love to learn more about it. It just seems like it's a lot. Like you could really dive deep into that. And uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's a uh, full speciality. I mean, people take years and years just to, oh, yeah. to master the craft. And yeah. And I still fight in uh, sometimes with my wife on the colors. Like it's 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 it's, it's black. It's no, it's dark blue. It's, uh, it's like is she, is she oh, more into the color grading or are you? No, no, no. It's nothing uh, to do. It, but uh, yeah, I think she has better eye than me. And sometimes uh, I, I I'm just terrible just distinguishing colors even like. Well, looking at your picture, your background right now, I can tell you've got a good eye. I like the the nice green light, like the plants. This is, you know, it's a good image. I like Thank it. You. Yeah, yeah, it's um, yeah, um, it's uh, yeah, it's a bit dark actually, but the camera it's blowing everything. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I I am always worried for my plants that they don't have enough sunlight actually. Uh. Wow. Yeah, just this uh, actually it's just this time in the day you know here it's in the morning yeah. in japan that i have some light natural light from there well so. yeah thank you again for for meeting i know we're on opposite ends of the world so thank you yeah no no i mean it's not super early it's it's almost okay. 10 10 a.m so it's 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 completely fine time for me okay. but thank you the um um sorry i lost the train of thoughts on that but um yeah so uh going back to um Norman's Island. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So you go to NSC, you did like, was more like in, in the pitch festival they have. You had the opportunity to pitch it there. How, how was the... Yeah. yeah, I didn't really know about any of those things. So I just went, I paid for the MIFA pass, which is like an mm -hmm. extra thousand bucks or whatever. Yes. And, uh, and so then that gives you access to the whole like business side of the festival. Yes. And I just walked around and I had an iPad and I was like, every single person that I could rope into watching it, I would show them. <laughs> and yeah. they're probably like, uh, who are you? Why am I watching this? Okay. And then, <laughs> but I got some really nice comments. Um, you know, like there's a couple of animation studios in France, which I'm blanking on the name of now. They were like, we should do a co-production. Let's get all this stuff sorted out. And I was like, what's a co-production? I have no idea. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's I, very European style. It, that, yeah. Yeah. And, and, I think if I would have had a producer and I had, would have had a little more knowledge, it might have been a very successful trip. Um, mm -hmm. um, but it was just more educational and informative. So, yeah. Yeah, normally I, I, I've been in the same uh, like uh, situation as you, like uh, getting the MIFA pass and trying to go there and just call, uh, uh, how you say, uh, turkey called like showing to the people but normally usually the people that are on the stands are not decision makers or producers yeah. and, and you may have the luck to hit one but usually it's maybe people that it's just there like just to to attend the stand or give yeah. some like flyers and things like that and what i learned through the years it's a lesson this festival that is probably the one that i i went the most it's to you need to have your agenda up front yeah and the business business is done in the cafeteria of the hotel restaurant yeah in the I restaurant is yeah. on the in the rooms of the hotel like yeah. so i mean you can have meetings also in the in the in the mifa because they have like little rooms or uh, tables that you have meetings with people um 
but you need to have your agenda front so if okay. you want someone listening uh, a less i cannot give too much advice in this but for for mifa check the the companies or production companies that you go uh gonna be the, you, if you uh get the the mifa pass early on you have access to the contacts so try to reach out the people it's gonna be there and show your staff up front and try to get an appointment and that's the way that works and it's hard as hell because oh, yeah. there's a lot of people and if they don't know you i mean if you have a good presentation like your work uh it's it's gonna be easier but sometimes it's it's um it's very hard and yeah. the only for me the only moment or the only year that i had more appointments was when i was with a big studio working on the development department for this big studio that they have a name already in europe yeah. and i was uh with my friend trini that's a sales agent and she <laughs> Uh, and Tony Marine, that was a producer for with many years of experience, and they, nice. they oh, you need to talk with this, and they make the introductions, and they have, and I was trying to produce uh, some of the projects internally there, and they then the people oh you coming with Tony oh you coming with Trini so uh, they're gonna, <laughs> gonna be, give you the chance to talk and <laughs> that's and awesome. to be honest it was I mean it it's, it's sad that but at least for me that was the only way I. I succeed to have a bunch yeah. of meetings that's it's not a succeed at all in anything else just right. to have meetings <laughs> yeah it's even just getting meetings is success you know what yeah. i mean someone give you a time of day yeah uh, but it's you know even yeah. even though i didn't know anything i wouldn't have traded it like it was a good it was a good yeah. experience and and uh like so it was kind of cool because unity needed some kind of image for their presence there and so they used my little guy and they plastered him all over the place yeah at the festival and i went to one party and um the guy was like tell me about your show he was just some producer and i was like oh you can see it right there and it was like across the street on this giant wall uh that, that, that makes a difference yeah it made a difference and and something like that is rare it's never going to happen to me again and uh <laughs> it was it was pretty cool and once in a lifetime opportunity so yeah and but you ended up uh like selling the rights or lending the rights to to a produ production company that yeah yeah and uh, may i ask how how is experience how ended up this this uh a deal or yeah not? i don't think it was the best deal i won't say which company it was but it was um it was a good experience for me because it was kind of my first time and i was just mm -hmm. like sure, i'll take whatever um um and they to their credit because i think what i learned is it wasn't developed enough really for to just a lot of studios want to see a script they want to see all everything lined up so it's like they can just buy it and just roll it into production right away and i would, didn't really have all that kind of stuff sorted out mm -hmm. so um they spent a lot of money on getting screenwriters and people to develop this world and build it out a bit more and it was looking cool. And I think they, from what I was told, is they had like 70% of the funding ready to go. And mm -hmm. it just never really fully came together. So, um, and I wasn't really fully involved either in any of that stuff. So I don't really know how far it went or or who saw it or who was pitched it or any of that kind of stuff. So I just sold them the concept and they just took it and ran with it. So, um, yeah, it was, yeah, it was cool though. Yeah. Well, you, you got the experience that it's also like something... Uh very valuable i think mm -hmm. and well, yeah to have an, i mean if you had like a screenwriter attached and they did like this can i mean they invested on that for sure so that's because yeah. it's it's not cheap i mean it's it's a to have a professional scriptwriter or like to develop the, the bible in some scripts mm -hmm. and everything that that's a lot of uh work also so yeah yeah but yeah it's i i know it's it's a very bittersweet when it doesn't and they're up being uh uh finished the project basically but yeah uh, totally. i think it was guillermo del toro who said that the natural state of a movie it's been not happening yeah or yeah something like I, that. Keep, I, I hear uh my friend always says most things don't happen 
So it's like, even though if it looks like it's like, you know, Steven Spielberg, he's pitching a thing and he's a big, big time yeah. director. Most things don't happen. It doesn't really matter who you are or where you are. Yeah. So every movie or every TV show honestly is a little bit of a miracle, you know, that it's just yeah. it completed. It's on time. It's on budget. And it's out there. <laughs> Like it's, it's more amazing. than a miracle. It's a yeah. bag of miracles altogether. <laughs> yeah, it is. Honestly, it is. Oh, uh, yeah. And we know that we've been in production. We're like, how are we going to do this? We have no idea. And somehow people yeah. figure it out. <clears throat> it's cool. And it take, it take years, years sometimes to, to get the fruition. I, I think yesterday, no, it was the last week, I saw this new trailer for a movie from Takeshi Gitano. You know Takeshi Gitano? It's a very famous director here in Japan uh, very well it did it's doing this epic uh, samurai movie now it's oh, cool. uh, gonna be in theaters this year I think and it and it, here here it's like a semi god person it's very famous okay. and um, I think it was 30 years to try to rise the <laughs> the movie that's, it's like that's that's nuts yeah, and it's, I mean, it's, it, it doesn't get bigger here in Japan in terms of directors uh, that can have, I mean, they they have a l really good directors, but I think in terms of budgets and prestige, like internationally and things like that, I, I think that Takeshi, it's, it's probably the biggest one. Wow. Um, cool. I'll yeah. definitely um, send me a link later. I'd love to watch. Yeah. I, I show you the, the link. You probably know this this guy. He's also a humorist in, in, TV, in TV. He does like completely different things. It's really? crazy. Is it animated or is it live action? No, no, live action. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, I'll check it out. <clears throat> oh, yeah. And um, so, and after that, you st uh, started with uh, your other project that is the one that got my attention on Twitter. I was yeah. commenting off mic before. Like, it's uh, Magic and the Machines. Yeah, with the uni unicorn, beautiful unicorn, and the um, robots. Yeah, that's a yeah. recurring it's, uh, topic. Yeah, it's um, <laughs> it's nice. uh, robots are nice. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to like I, I tell a story when I pitched it, like how I came up with the idea, and it was just like my son loves Transformers, my daughter loved My Little Pony, and so uh -huh. I was just like, and they're fighting over the remote, and they wa both wanted to watch what they wanted to watch, and I was like. Why can't I just make a show that uh, is for everybody? You know what I mean? Like, like anyone who <laughs> likes whatever, it's just a mashup of all these different ideas. And, oh, and nice. it's, not, it's not a gendered show. It's for, you know, any kid. Yeah. And um, so I wanted to make something that's like a cute, what you'd think would be cute would be like the unicorn, but she's going to be rough and tough. And then you have this robot who's supposed to be like a transformer, but he's going to be a cute, silly, fun robot. Uh, so, and then just put these two, being there. yeah, these two like different types of personalities, like every type of buddy cop movie, mm -hmm. there's always like a, a happy guy and a grumpy guy. You put them together and that's just comedy gold. And I just want to take that and mash together some different genres and, um, and have a world of mystery and adventure and all that kind of stuff for them to explore. So. Yeah, that was that was the idea, and um, it was pretty fun. We we I put some of the images on online, and um, um, a producer saw it and reached out, and he helped me. And I have a writing partner, Mark Tannenbaum, who also joined us after the image came out, and then the three of us kind of shaped this story into a good pitchable deck and got it out there, and we went everywhere. Like the thing is, like a year and a half ago. Netflix and all the streamers like we're deep into COVID. Yeah, animation was hot, you know, like it was mm -hmm. a big commodity when we started. And then by the time we were ready to pitch it, it's like just like this time last year, Netflix mm -hmm. posted a loss, and so then they pulled back, and then all the yeah. other streamers pulled back, and all this kind of stuff. And we just started pitching it, and just didn't really seem to make much traction, just because you know we're in a tough economic place right now, and. Mm -hmm. uh, and like weird ideas like Ninja Turtles and Batman and all that kind of stuff, they're risky ideas at first, you know? Yes. And this idea itself is also a bit out there and a bit different. And that sounds like risk. So <laughs> it didn't really do go you, Do you had a chance to, to pitch to Netflix or yeah. they didn't even take the pitch? No, they took the pitch. Yeah. Oh, uh, and cool. so did Disney and a bunch of other animation studios, um, like smaller, just, you know, 
animation house and stuff like that. And um, I think we got good results. Like I think people seem to enjoy the show uh, and the concept of it. Um, it is a little bit like a lot of highbrow explanation in order to set the story up. Mm-hmm. Like you kind of have to say it's fantasy and science fiction mashed together. And why is mm-hmm. it like that? All that kind of stuff, which is always difficult, you know, mm-hmm. like to set the story up like that is a lot of legwork that you kind of have to walk mm-hmm. people through. Um, mm-hmm. And if I could do it again, maybe I'll just hop right into it and just say, you know what? We're in a world full of magic and robots and, and let's just roll with it and let's see what happens and not explain things so much. Yeah, th- yeah but this is something, I mean, that that's, um. I mean, it's something that you need, I guess, to learn doing pitches and yeah. pitch and pitch after pitch. And you you learn how to pitch. And this is like a super valuable lesson, like the uh, like maybe to over explaining or uh, you have to, to have, they say, all the elevator pitch and all these things. Uh, but the yeah, it, it's uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's your 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 kid. Yeah, I've got a, uh, a son here. <laughs> Jack, do you want to say hi? Hello. He's hiding. Sorry. That's I'm just on, a, just on a phone call. Can I? Can we play later? Is that okay? Thanks, buddy. <laughs> um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Uh, no, no, I was saying about the 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 pitch that to 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 learn how to pitch, it's it's an art. I mean, there, oh, there is. It's and, and I think maybe and this project maybe didn't succeed, but if you have the the chance to pitch it over and over, it's it's in a, in a real like life situation, not pitching to to your friends to train how to pitch, yeah. but yeah. like real like this. It's also like something that you need to go through this uh, to. Uh, succeed in the future because if you don't go there it's it's like any other skill you need to train it and you need to to see what it works what doesn't work how you need to to tone yeah. your your presentation where you need yeah. to add the information where you you can keep the information and so on this is something i i know uh it's very important uh in the few chances i had to do pitching i i didn't i, I think i didn't have enough uh practice yeah i hear you <laughs> and I, I i screw it like in some situations <laughs> like pretty like going on tangents and whatever like uh even i practices and the people say like you should practice in front of a mirror like an actor or things like that it's true yeah. you need to to go and it, because i don't know you but i get super nervous like oh, completely yeah. like like even t- how do you say in english like when you cannot t- 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 like t- stutter t- Stutter, yeah, a little yeah. stutter. Yeah, I know. Me oh, too. and then shaky stutter. hands, like, oh my god, <laughs> that's 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 the worst. It's like when you finish, it's like, what happened? <laughs> as a as a child, I had a stutter too. So like, mm. I have a little, and I still kind of trip over words often. Um, mm. So it's, yeah. I hear you. It's tough. Um, our producer said, read off a script so that you, you know it's right everything word for word. Just read off that, which is good advice, I think, in order to get information out. But it's it may not be the best like i just felt like a robot reading a script and i want to be more like more conversational yeah. natural yeah. but that's, that's if tough. if i had to to say like it's better reading a script than going in tangents i mean yeah. if, if you're yeah. not sure you better read a script i think right it, because the worst it can go it's like completely tangent and maybe it's explaining too much something of a secondary plot or something that is not even like interesting for the main histories that it happened right. like you go try to and you corner yourself <laughs> somewhere and you realize you lost your maybe 10 15 minutes that you have sometimes to pitch or if you're lucky sometimes yeah. more but uh i have in situations like yeah 10 minutes or 15 minutes and that's it yeah i hear you it's it's um yeah, it's a tough balance because you want to be yourself, but you also want to get stay on script and get your stuff out. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's fun though. Yeah, and then so after all this uh, pitching, and well, you had some people helping you that was involved on the production, trying to help on on this area. Uh, so 
you 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 feel like you 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 finish all your avenues you try all your your possibilities on this project and it's kind of like uh yeah. not going anywhere how, how do you feel about that yeah I, mean, I don't know i mean i still like the world i think there's still like something there um we could we could possibly like i posted on twitter like hey i'm gonna put this down you you saw it and reached out yeah. but um a lot of people have mentioned crowd crowdfunding and stuff and i i think that would be interesting um but crowdfunding is like it's also a lot of work too like it's kind of a full-time job managing mm um rewards and and donations and then let's say we get enough money to do an episode then you know it's probably not going to be a lot of money it's just going to be enough to barely mm -hmm. pay people and that's just be a lot of work and i don't know I, I feel like i feel like it's a big push in order to make it happen i think we could do it um but uh, i don't know it's just been a long haul already and i just feel like it's like running a marathon and then you're mm -hmm. you see the finish line and then you're like oh never mind just turn around go back and do it again it's like that's just it's a lot so i don't know we'll yeah. see we'll see yeah i, I think yes sometimes uh, for my experience uh when you try for long with a project it gets a bit stinky or yeah. you feel like uh, i i you lose a, a little bit your own traction on your project and maybe you feel like you have another ideas you you have learned from your experience or what you want to do and you feel more like attracted the, to do another project that again that's also very dangerous like you have double edged sword here is when you because maybe what they need is to keep pushing and yeah. but at the same time you don't feel like you want to do something else fresh new new hopes but it's it's a i think it's a complicated uh yeah yeah point you know it, to me it's a show it's a series it's a 10 episode season mm -hmm. but multiple seasons and that's how i'd like to for this property to, to exist i can't do that by myself uh it, all the streamers turned it down already so even if we got crowdfunding money it's kind of like they've all seen it already and they all said no so it's kind of like mm -hmm. you know where do i really go do i want to make three seasons by myself not really <laughs> that would be a lifelong journey uh and it'd be tough but um i think it's important to know when to put stuff down too you know what i mean mm -hmm. like not always be tempted to a new shiny idea but but also know like yeah. we we gave it a shot and it's okay to put it down so yeah, yeah. it's still there it's still there in case you know someone comes back years later but mm. yeah that's is something i i i was commenting the other day also like the uh, because I, I work like also like 50 50 video games and oh. animation and i feel like in the um in the video games in the indie area like it, it, it you have another avenues you can grow your um your fan base your mm -hmm. your community around uh, a game uh that you are developing and you can crowdfund it and you mm -hmm. you can give it that as a of like your game like the people because it's you can show everything from the game but until the people doesn't have it and doesn't uh, play it by his own you can pretty much spoil a lot of stuffs and the people can get very interested on your game and when you, they have it they can have the experience but in animation on in a linear format like uh, any like uh film um you cannot do that you cannot engage your uh community showing everything and then uh, i mean I, I was thinking myself like uh like how you can do that uh, even like if you do like i mean i, I saw all the people like doing like feature film movies uh yeah uh by his by his own uh Denver. maybe you put half of the movie for free so you engage your community and then if you want to see the other half in a high all in the higher quality so you can sell it that part so i mean which one will be like the the idea like ultimate in the kind of i don't need uh this uh company uh a streamer yeah. or classic broadcast or distributor yeah to 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 produce a project and to be uh, profitable in in a way that I can get the 
uh, my living from. Yeah, that, I think. Sorry, I didn't cut you off. Go ahead. No, that would be the ideal. I, I yeah. think like if you finish, let's say if I finish a movie, okay, the first movie it's gonna be a pain, yeah. but you sell it somehow, you get money, so you can start this uh, wheel of uh, like investing and and recopying and. But it's not how it works. I mean, normally <laughs> when you yeah. finish the stuff, you already. I mean, you you don't have enough returns to to do it again because you already sell it the rights to get the money to do it in the first place so it's kind of like yeah i think um you know ian hubert the uh blender artist he does a lot of amazing yeah effects. i know i know yeah. i know the the guy doing this amazing um he's not only kind of super talented cyber he's funny thing, yeah. yeah yeah oh yeah and i, I saw some of his uh talks it's hilarious yeah. like also the tutorials i see i don't you should get him but... you should get him on here i think he'd be fun to talk to but um I think he's doing Patreon, right? So he has a lot of subscribers on Patreon and he makes his films. They come out when he's done with them, like when they're ready. Mm -hmm. But I think every month he'll release a little tutorial or an asset pack or something. Like he'll scan a bunch of like yes. you know, tractor parts or whatever and give them out. So it's like, for me, I, I just want to support him because I'm. it's like five bucks a month and I like his stuff and whatever. Mm -hmm. And that gives him money to make his stuff and he gives us little little treats every month you know every little rewards mm -hmm. um and maybe that's the way you don't necessarily need to sell the film you're just selling you're yeah. selling yourself kind of as a source yeah. of knowledge and, and yeah support. that's true the yeah. the other th the other route it's to to like uh i saw people like uh, for instance I, I really admire like I've been working with Tonko House. I don't know if you know oh, yeah. Yeah, work and but they also like really good at um like creating community and mm. also they have uh, the shop that they sell like like these uh toys or like uh some clothing or accessories like uh, notebooks and things like that that are related to to his work. And that's something really interesting. I, I like I don't see too many indie independent studios, not not solo people, but just independent studios that do that. They mm -hmm. that they they have the vision to to okay animation is tough, but let's get some extra uh, income revenue so we can support ourselves to develop new projects and to create quality uh, on our work, even if it's not uh, like end up like. Um, doing the uh like uh, like um selling the project or anything just to create ip and generate like they they have one that called acorns was mm. very short uh series that they released it on on youtube and oh. was i mean they didn't sell it or anything but they, they have this kind of like okay let's create something and 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 twist it uh and it, I really admire what they're doing on that. That's but awesome. I, yeah, I think it's, uh, for me, it's a unique case. Uh, and now Ian, you're talking about, I think Ian, I think it's a lot of Blender community. That's kind of, I, I mean, that's okay. Uh, but it's 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 a very unique community, I think. They support because they use, I mean, the, the guy is amazing in what he does, but I'm pretty sure if he w w use another, any other software, will not have the same traction. Yeah, that's possible. Because Blender community is very much a um, very avid, very active place. Yeah. Um, that's probably a good point, yeah. Yeah. But still, like, it's a good, I mean, um, example, I think. Yeah, yeah. And sure. yeah. Well, that's very cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so with your project, uh, you did, obviously, it's uh, all render in real time with uh, Unity. Yeah. I, I guess that and uh how how was the so i saw the trailer it's online i will add the links or sure. maybe edit some parts of this video so we can overlay some of these yeah. um, uh, images and what we're talking but so you did also basically the pipeline was like my i guess and uh unity for uh yeah. rendering or what you do in one and what you do in the other it's like it's a, it's a good question these days like when i first started i had no idea i was just 
lucky to get anything out of the software. But nowadays, what I like to do is I do my previs in Unity. So like I have my whole sequence built out in mm -hmm. editor, uh, all my cameras with like rough, rough animation, just like translation of assets through scenes and yeah, stuff. Like t animation. That's yeah, t -pose, Yeah. And with like the dialogue chopped in mm -hmm. there so that I can space it out. Uh, and then I'll export those cameras and set if I need to, like I'll build my sets in there into mm -hmm. Maya, animate it all properly and bring it back in. Um, cause I just like, you can do this with Unreal or Blender even, I think, uh, where I just like the idea of not having to go back and forth between the editor and, and editing. Do you know what I mean? Like render a shot, put it into the edit, and then, oh, you know what? Change the camera. Like if you can do it all at the same time, mm -hmm. um, editing and camera work and, and all that stuff, mm -hmm. it's just like, it's unlocked something in my brain and I'm, I'm like way more engaged with the storytelling at that point and it's it's super fun like it's i don't know it's the only way i want to work now mm -hmm. no. yeah cool. real time it's that that the, the biggest advantage you can you can see in context in more context like it's probably not gray boxes and yeah <laughs> you, you have more and um so you do storyboards or you just uh plan all your work on because now it's much more accessible so i i guess it's it's an option, no? Like don't do a storyboard, just you go with an idea, maybe some sketches and start directly there. So you, you already jump a lot of uh work. Yeah. I think if you want to do storyboards, by all means go for it. Uh I, I just think I just think in more in 3D. That's just how mm -hmm. my brain works. So I want to plan out the cameras and like of camera panning through space is really hard to draw, clearly, you know what I mean? Yes. Um, especially for me, because I'm the worst artist. But uh, uh, if I can just rough it out quickly in in engine or something, that it's um, I don't know. I just find it really fascinating. It communicates the idea clearly for other people who are mm -hmm. collaborating with you. Yeah. And I think yeah, with uh, all the prefabs and everything, I said dressing and mm -hmm. composition, it's much more easier. I think the tools on game engines for creating environments are much more powerful the way that snaps everything you have certain sometimes dynamics so they, yeah. they have contact so you don't need to oh it's crossing it's just through some rocks and they're gonna land in the floor and yeah, totally. kind of things that yeah. it's um, maybe i mean you can do it in maya they, they have tools yeah. but <laughs> it's not streamlined as it's an in the game engines yeah, I love just taking, like, there's a, I can't remember the name of the tool in Unity. I think I realized one too. Where I just grab a bunch of, like, a folder full of assets and I put it on, like, a brush. Let's say I'm just, like, making garbage on the street. I can just, like, mm. spray and it just drops all these assets everywhere. And I'm like, cool, done. I don't need to place it's each little soda can. Brush something tool? I don't really remember. Yeah, it's like one... scatter brush or something. Yeah. 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 Stuff like that. I just think is, I don't know, It's it makes environment art really not so scary you know mm -hmm. even though i would not call myself an environment artist those people are very talented yeah. but um, no yeah. but I, I remember uh with uh, my son was a couple of years ago i downloaded one of these uh third person action um example packs from from unity uh the one it's a girl and you have like this kind of monster frogs uh, it's an environment like uh, like uh alien environment that you have oh yeah yeah okay and i remember with all the prefabs and everything that you had and the, the gameplay was there mm -hmm. uh, I, we did a really nice back like like uh background like scenario with my kid and we did some kind of crazy oh, cool. things there it was like a lot of fun and it was it took like me like uh just going through a couple of uh tutorials and things and get the data and once you have it to build like the environment, I found super funny to do it with with my kid, and mm. well, at the end we ended up doing like a staircase of like I don't know how many kilometers and jumping from there <laughs> just all the time. It was silly. Like, that's really... awesome, and it's it's great that you're collaborating with your kid. Like that's that's super fun. I love that. I can't wait till they're old enough. I'll do that with them too. That how old cute. are your kids? Uh, eight and six. My six, my eight year old probably could start doing it now. Yeah, um, my, my son, it's yeah, I did it when maybe my son was like maybe even younger, like seven or something. Okay. Mine, it's nine now, and my daughter is it's gonna be six this month, so 
it's a very close very close yeah well that's great that's awesome super yeah. fun i mean it's if you get the the everything like the, these packs the, in the prefab you just drag and drop and because all adjusts automatically it's like super easy and you play yeah. the game and you can run on your uh your game and yeah and that's it that's uh, i started um i started prototyping a little game with uh this dinosaur character that i was talking about with yeah, i saw it yeah on your yeah. youtube channel oh uh, yeah and i put like the face capture thing on the iphone so like he can play it and then start talking like i'm oh, going to eat a building and it's just like his base talking it's pretty fun um That's cool. i just i'm not much of a dev like i can i can play with those things but i can't really like build a full game <laughs> and, you know? and and talking i was checking also your uh your feed you, i i saw in one of your uh posts that you in some point also with uh norman iceland the island you you you, you prototype it like a little game or something do, do you think this is maybe the the way like if you have like this world build like in also with uh m magic and the machines like th maybe it, it, it's a con like something that can be more game but also yeah. keeping the story I, because there there is i mean there are many types of games and can be story driven games that yeah. maybe you, you have everything there, your material, or just need you know, a little uh, kind of refocus and yeah. can be also a series, but maybe I think, with some I think that's Yeah, that's exactly what I would love to do. Um, so if any one of your listeners are like a finance person that wants to fund this idea, I would love to make a studio that's like a animation studio slash game studio. We all use real-time tools and like the assets are the same. Uh, interchangeably between the, the IP so that you can have like your TV show and you can have a game and a mobile app or whatever. Like, I feel like that is the way to do it. And, and more people I think are starting I to do that. Totally agree with that. Yeah. In, indeed, this is one of the things I'm more eager because I told you like working half animation, half video games right now. And the, uh, there is a lot of overlaps and there is more and more and once you have this wall with these characters that the people love, I mean, unless it's, I mean, depends on the games. If some games doesn't have that much of a background kind of story, mm -hmm. it's more like a action package or like kind of thing. But uh, there is also like uh, this area of, that can be easily transported or uh, tell or enjoy it in different mediums like video game and the animation and both of them can share a lot of work together so mm -hmm. it's not like you do two things you you overlap enough that maybe it's 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 uh maybe 60 percent and 60 percent of each part and does yep. the hundred and hundred for both parts yeah and it's yeah, not i think like, you're right yeah. yeah and i think that's super powerful and i think that would be really liberating for a lot of creators because like if you're like me and you're trying to build an ip you need that name recognition and if you can build a game you can get an audience you can get you know you can get that kind of ip train rolling and stuff mm -hmm. and i think i don't know i think that's the way to do it yeah maybe i, I was thinking also like this serialized games i mean you have the the dlcs and but more meant to be serialized game where mm -hmm. maybe you have a little episode that maybe it's one two hours gameplay or Show yeah. gameplay because I know I think play that or like this um this company uh like the other one that they, they did um oh, I blanked the Telltale they did like The Walking Dead where it's like yeah uh, they had no not these yeah. ones the, the this uh, blanket the I have man I have the game and I blanket the, the oh, that's okay well anyway they they have these games that are like um five hours gameplay things like that so you don't need to do this uh like super long gameplays or something but maybe just short gameplay yeah. plus maybe animation or maybe even the store like you you can have like part of the story in the game like you know i love that it it's, uh, that is that is something um yeah. so let's do it when do we yeah. start <laughs> oh my god I'm, I'm getting in troubles now <laughs> I know. <laughs> no but yeah honestly it's 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 something that i always think about like um where is the the, the good balance and at the end you, you want to create 
stories, content, and entertain the people. And uh, yeah, it's maybe the route to go, like to have some like kind of hybrid if because um yeah i think it, it for uh, yeah like game but also game industry it's i mean uh, right now uh, everything it's very it's, uh, there's a lot of people doing because it's more um accessible to everybody at the same time there is more people doing a lot of content yeah. and it's, it's true. also it's hard you need to pick very well your where you want to to put your contact the like the niche where you want the the uh, like the 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 community like if right you really really need to find a place to 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 be to live or to to do mm -hmm. your stuff you cannot probably compete with i don't know zelda or <laughs> resident evil or things like that that it's been done like and you, you have these big names doing it yeah you might not need like like Zelda needs to make a billion dollars in order okay. for it to be successful, right? And and for most people, you don't need that. You don't need to sell that many copies in order to be successful, right? There's still a lot of success. Yeah. Small teams. Yeah, success. It's it's uh, something that is not unique uh, and one success. It it depends of your context and yeah. your uh, goals. What means success for one? It's a failure for the other, and yeah, the other yeah. way around. True. And now with the um, success of the Mario animated film, I feel like they're looking yeah. for games to make in the movies. So, you know. Maybe it's a new trend, yeah, in the next yeah. few years because that it's it's how it goes. And uh, but yeah, one one thing I have sometimes I take notes of little like uh, quotes from people smarter than me and I and I have one noted here that remember like fail or success it's not personal that means to be a professional yeah i think that's very true you know a lot of my friends there's like a lot of layoffs going on throughout the whole tech and game industry right now and it's like it's not like any of those people it's not like that's any of their faults at all like they're all super talented and super amazing folks you know and mm -hmm. it's no fault of theirs that yeah. you know the economy just yeah. kind of goes through these times. yeah also like that's not like you you keep doing i mean you're professional of creating stories characters yeah. so you maybe didn't get uh this uh project or the other project to to be a finished but it's it's not like a fail or success it's just a, you, you it's your profession you keep doing this yeah, that's true that's true i think i have to do them faster though because it's like i put all this time into animated bits <laughs> and <laughs> it's very time consuming <laughs> yeah yeah animation it's 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 uh very time consuming i i i agree with that it's um maybe more i don't know Techno technology it's coming i mean i the, the, my problem it's i don't like a motion capture i like cartoon slice animation oh, yeah. even not like a full fr frame animation like maybe in twos or threes or like, sure. yeah. and turns out it's becoming more like the um oh, kind of premium thing to do because yeah. mocap and other capturing technologies is becoming so so easy and so accessible that uh, yeah it's a, it's a cheap kind of uh well, and, and quotes realistic. there quotes yeah. because sorry well done it's not cheap but you know yeah and like realistic graphics too like now that we've kind of gotten there a lot of engines are can do really amazing images yeah uh, and it's like, well, you can scan, photo scan any tree at a bajillion polygons and it'll show up there and look amazing. Mm -hmm. um, but now that that's kind of like easily done, um, it's more about what can we do that's abstract? Mm -hmm. That's the next thing. Yeah. You know? And that's what's really interesting. And I'm excited to see that stage in real time. I think CG is going through it now with Spider-Verse and all that kind of stuff with the offline record. Yeah. And yeah, we'll that for yeah. real time. Yeah, I think now it's this trend to Spider Verse, even the new Ninja, uh, yeah, girls, uh, yeah. the, the Ninja Turtles. Also, the, do you saw the trailer? It's it's, a, it's really yeah, nice, it's beautiful, yeah. it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah, love it. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, and it's great because they try to do each project a little different, so it's not like uh, trying to repeat the formula, but willing to experiment more before yeah. out of this classic Pixar Disney uh, look. 
I'm feeling. Even, even Disney and Pixar, like Turning Red, was a little bit. It felt yeah. like uh, it was influenced by anime in a lot of ways and stuff. And and it, yes. it looked awesome. Loved it. So yeah, the the latest trailer. It's I don't remember the name. It's a princess. It's also like this toon kind of toon shading ish. It's 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 different of what they did. Oh, yeah, the, the wish wish one the the Disney one called yeah, wish. Yeah, I think it's wish. Yeah, the. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the latest cool. one, the trailer. And I didn't watch the Bad Guys yet. Oh, but, I love that movie. Yeah, but I great. heard it's all, all good stuff about this movie. And the trailer looks amazing. So. Yeah, yeah, really nice style on it. And uh, sorry, my kids are poking their heads in the door. But uh, yeah, it's uh, super fun. All right. Well, I think it's been great talk. And we, we hit more than an hour mark that sorry hey. for taking abusing your time <laughs> but yeah it was fantastic talk and i really appreciate uh, you take the time to come to the podcast and share your experience and i hope uh we can we can repeat this next time yeah. with yeah. another project yeah sure and, Love and see how how evolve it and hopefully this one will End up in a good port in uh, harbor, <laughs> you say? Good harbor. Yeah, it's so upset. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it was a pleasure meeting you, and thank you so much for having me. It's uh, so awesome to um, be a part of this, uh, and I can't wait for the next one. Thank you.